Sir, uh, one more thing that this is constantly that I listen to your talks in which attention and concentration was discussed. <coughs> that, was, that was a beautiful discourse. Mm -hmm. I got clear that what I thought was attention is actually concentration. So even if I am concentrating, then it is that I just need an acclamation that because it, it is always there is a doubt that whether I am attentive or not. And I know that if there is a doubt, of course I am not attentive. So I don't know attention, but I of course know that okay, being here is just listening. Even the difference between attention and concentration is the difference between the center that concentrates. Attention is concentration from the right center. Hmm? Attention also begins with an object. Remember this. Attention too, at least in the beginning, has an object. Concentration too has an object. The difference is the center. With concentration, you will be acting upon thought with that object. You are applying thought to that object. Even when you concentrate. The one making the choice is different. In concentration, the one making the choice is afraid. That is why he is looking very sharply at that fellow. He might kill me, so I am concentrating on him. In attention, the one making the choice is alright. And it's, it's, it is not that the the one who is attentive is thinking that oh he is good to me. He is not he is not applying any. He might think anything. anything, or he may not think anything. But he is not fearful. He is all right. Remember, thought is work. Just as we said, any work is as good or as bad as the other and there is no real differentiator. Similarly, there are no good thoughts and bad thoughts. You can think anything. Hmm? When hands move, you call it physical action. When thoughts move, you call it mental action, work, mental work. But isn't this the very thought that keeps me away from what is happening? Aren't, aren't the thoughts the, the barrier for not attending to the result? You see, you cannot attend to something via thought. Just as we said that work will not give you love. Similarly, Thoughts will not bring you to work, but you can come to the work in love. Okay. Having come to the work, now you can think. It's confusing for yourselves. You see, Valuing what you are doing is important. If you value what you are doing, then even thinking is alright. Thinking will be sharp, clear, honest, well directed. Okay. And Right valuation can come only from the right center of valuation. From the right center, value it rightly. Then thoughts will be like servants to the value decided. It has been decided that this thing has a high value. Now thoughts will come quickly and like efficient workers in very little time they will finish off the work. Hmm? So basically when I am in that fairy land it's because yeah, I have put more value to that and when I put more value to something then that is the center that, that we make that what I choose. 
this is a question that you must answer for yourself what is really valuable what is really valuable So you said that uh, about having objective. They do not have an objective of choosing the right kind of work or profession. Rather, have an objective of choosing the right center. Choose the right center. So, I want to ask you, who is the one who will make the choice? Like, the one who makes the other choices. Just as you have no. <coughs> inhibitions in choosing fear which you choose all the time choose fearlessness the one making the choice is there right let him choose fearlessness if you can't choose fearlessness then you aren't even choosing fear because then there is no choice right saying i am choosing fear is meaningful only when you have an option to choose fearlessness also if a and b are kept in front of you and there is no option to choose b then are you even choosing a then a is being imposed upon you it's not a choice but you know there is a choice and if there is a choice you can exercise it the other way as well you can but you I mean, usually never end up making that choice because making that this choice is more probable than making that choice. It's not really condition. so. Not really so. You heard a few things from here and there, so you randomly made this choice. There is nothing more to it. It's quite empty of any real reason. So related to this is uh, one person question, right? So if there is one thing that is common in Almost everything. One thing that that is the underlying thing. It is that see, just go close, see, observe. I have clearly seen that seeing is is a matter of potential. Either it happens or it does not happen. No, it's not. Either it happens or it does not happen. I mean, मैं जानना चाहता हूँ कि is it about a particular quality of the brain? Because sometimes either it happens or it does not. If I have have had good sleep. it would automatically happen some other time i would try for minutes and minutes and it won't happen right i want to see something i just as he was saying that one wants to go deep into the mind either it happens or it does not happen so is it about potential with some people it happens with some it does not happen i think it is about the quality of the brain about the quality of the body people have tried it people have said that if you have healthy and able bodies then the chances of them being more realized is higher people are saying that you know you can get a buddha only if firstly the body is able but there would be no end to your disappointment if in spite of having a thousand able bodied people you do not get a single buddha so this cause and effect does not hold it simply does not hold you have had a stavak who had a very disabled body and he is still a stomach and you have had millions and billions of examples of able bodied people who were nowhere close to realization do not bring in that linkage even seemingly very intelligent people have fallen prey to this poor belief that it has something to do with the body when you say brain you mean the body it has nothing to do with the body nothing at all in fact don't try to bring it within the domain of cause and effect you are trying to predict it no of course there will be other factors also this is this won't suffice i am not saying that having a good body would suffice but of course this can i mean not having a good body can be One of the causes which would impede the process of attention. No, when you are attentive, 
the body is bound to change. But how do you in the first place become attentive? How do you did you in the first place become inattentive? Because I Because was, hmm? God <laughs> <laughs> the question is not what happened after eating that meal. The question is what was happening at the point of decision making? Why were you consuming those six parathas? And then you will keep going and going back and going back and you will have to come to the original sin. The mind was feeling vacant, so you were filling up the stomach. The original sin. Now then in the morning when you can't pay attention, then you say the parathas are responsible. The parathas are not responsible. Did the parathas come on their own? and invade you. How are they responsible? 